Okay, so welcome back to the next part. Um, Condi is in the process of getting the foundation pieces of uh, the live rock sculpture in there. Uh, Scott is currently going to be mounting the uh, Tunzi internal pump mounts. Uh, these will be mounts that uh, I had made because the magnet on the Tunzis isn't strong enough to grasp through the two inch thick acrylic. So they're little uh, pockets for lack of a better description made out of quarter inch acrylic uh, that we will actually glue uh, to the uh, back side of the tank and in turn the Tunzi magnets will clamp onto those. Having bleached the 500 gallon tank over the course of the last three weeks, we've arrived today, drained the tank, cleaned it out, created the means to support the light fixtures, installed the aquarium apex hardware, and begun to assemble the live rock sculpture inside the tank. Scott's persuaded Condi to allow him into the tank to position the acrylic mounts for one of the three means of moving water with inside the tank. So with the one mount mounted and being held in with tape and currently uh, gluing, uh, Scott is starting to work on the uh, opposing one on the other side. These acrylic mounts will hold the Tunzi brand internal water pumps and will provide water movement through the center portion of the tank. The other two means of water movement will come from a pair of external reflow Barracuda water pumps located outside next to the filter system, one being for filter circulation, the other being for internal circulation. So with Condi back inside the tank, creating the uh, sculpture, he's got uh, Reggie seeking out particular pieces that'll fit in certain spots with inside the tank. <coughs> this is where it becomes a uh, artistic endeavor. Older. Stuff that we brought up earlier, bro. Hey, the stuff we brought earlier, bro. I don't know if you wanted any from the house. You see that one? The building of this live rock sculpture consists of carbon fiber rods that are drilled in or through the various rocks. But it's the artistry or the selective choices of which rocks are used. I need, I need some tall like this and thick so I can create right there, bro in which positions that Condi takes his cue or most pride in. And they obviously have some uh, language or communications between them so they know what uh, one's describing, at least we hope they do. So the Neptune stuff is slowly getting hooked up inside the filter area here. Scott has got his laptop out and he is uh, programming right now the heater on and off points. And then we'll discuss in a moment the chiller on and off points. Uh, here's our display module that'll tell us digitally what the tank is doing at the time. And then the probes currently are just hanging down here. They ultimately will go in the end of the sump down there. Scott's intent with the Apex unit is not so much to control all the various items, but to allow those items to operate as they were intended with the Apex acting as a backup or a fail safe. So part of that uh, special language the rock sculptor guys have, um, that piece that Connie's got in his hand is referred to as a he. Yeah, right there. Um, and so they're together working on uh, figuring out how to uh, position stuff and what looks good from the outside and what fits together from the inside. No, the other way was better. So Scott's using the display module that comes with the uh, Apex and what he's done now is he's uh, calibrated 
uh, the pH probe, and I think he's currently working on calibrating the conductivity probe. Which is done now. Which apparently he just finished uh, calibrating the conductivity. So, and then those probes are in a probe holder down here at the exit end of the filter system. And there will be uh, conductivity, pH, temperature, and I believe ORP, yes? Uh, yes. Yeah. So we'll be able to see what's going on salinity wise, um, ORP wise, pH level wise, as well as temperature wise. And of course, that allows us to control uh, when the heaters come on, when the chillers come on. Uh, there'll be an ATO that eventually will get uh, hooked up into the system. We've got the pump here today. Uh, I only the float switches haven't arrived yet. And for convenience sake, I ordered the um, uh, the breakout box, the Neptune breakout box through uh, Premium Aquatics, which is who I ordered the float switches from. But again, it's not arrived. And ultimately, we're going to need to order a uh, reservoir that'll hold the fresh water and that I'll end up probably putting down at this end so while I'm here by the way there's a razor blade for you if you need one down there a little rusty but um, this is where I'll put the uh, reservoir for the ATO hey Condi why don't you take a break pizza's here Lunch time. So the boys collectively are uh, getting the left side of the coral sculpture put together. I say collectively because they each have their uh, own suggestions and opinions. <laughs> Too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Yep. <laughs> but it'll eventually come together. I mean, it's looking impressive uh, at this point. Uh, we still have the entire right-hand side to do, and of course, to me, the question that's uh, in my mind is, where's he going to stand while he's trying to put in that right-hand side? Here. But um, what's this thing doing? Who knows? Maybe he'll be hanging, here, maybe? hanging in there upside down or something like that. So it's a process, that's for sure. So how'd you like to get all soaking wet? Oh gosh, you know, considering I got your camera. Yeah. All right, so customers all majorly excited and eager. Maybe you can back up a little bit and get me in the picture. Oh, there's Jim. Say hi to Jim. So the customer's all excited about his new reef tank. We're spending the entire day, which in my opinion is taking a little too long, to get all that really custom coral sculpture in there. But we'll endure it because it'll look pretty impressive afterwards. What I'm doing right now is rinsing out the sand because what I don't want to do is spend the whole day waiting to get that coral sculpture done, fill it up with salt water, and pour in this dirty, milky bags of sand Nasty. that turn the aquarium into a milkshake. Oh, and worse, coat the glass and every viewing pane and the side panes and everything It'll take else. a day for it to clear up. The customer's going to have a fit between now and then. And three days for Jim to scrub it off. Sorry. So, what I'm doing is rinsing out the sand. Now, uh, our friend Scott, Mr. Extremist, has been bawling me out for rinsing out the sand with garden hose water, fresh water. Well, bioactivated sand, I'm sure I'm getting rid of some of the bacteria, but that's what the live rock is supposed to do to begin with. I'm not counting on the sand to be the bioactivator. Number two, I'm trying to avoid the milkshake in the aquarium. So Scott seems to think I'm making a big mistake of rinsing out the sand with fresh water. But it's a small amount of sand and it's about 350 gallons plus of salt water. So I'm doing what I consider the right thing. yippee ki -yay. Thank you. So Condi stepped out of the tank for the moment. You can see this is the left hand sculpture that he's got done. Uh, Scott has zippity doo dogged his way in there since there's now a space available. Um, we did have a triangular shelf requested for the very back corner that we could place all the uh, assorted ballast on, but um, unfortunately I guess it didn't get completed. So it's not 
going to be available today which may stop us from actually finishing the lighting system only because why put the lighting system in if we have to tear it back out to put the shelf to hold the ballast in so we may hold off on finishing the lights there may be a few lights in there to make the tank illuminated enough for the customer to look it inside and enjoy it um, but that is the left hand coral sculpture so far um, which looks pretty nice got lots of what I refer to as landing zones to place corals upon. Um, still have the entire right side to do, but that's the next phase in the project. So I will step out of the way and let Scott finish what he's working on up there. And uh, let the um, Oh, I guess, yeah, that is something we can talk about. So uh, there is actually, okay, so there is a, a Tunzi. I can Tunzi on its uh, mount. Uh, acrylic mount uh, which is glued to the side of the um, aquarium. There's actually also another Tunzi poked back underneath there in that cave which will be kind of a challenge to access but um, I guess that'll become one of my challenges. It's really not that bad. Yeah, uh, sure. You're not so the guy see. that's got to climb in there. Go right there. Yeah. I'll just remember to bring my mask, snorkel, and a uh, scuba suit. Yeah, I don't like that, actually. I can tell him right now, he's not going to like that. <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, the boys are coming along. Put them right there in the middle, coming right out the middle. Yeah. That'll work. Oh, excuse me, that'll work. Right there, just... When you think of Tunzi products, you probably think of protein skimmers, internal pumps, and submersible filters. But did you know Tunzi also offers water level controllers, reverse osmosis water purification systems, pH, temperature, and ORP instrumentation? Are you aware of Tunzi's full line of various filter medias and LED lighting? Have you seen Tunzi's updated line of Turbell pumps, the Nano Stream, the Stream, and the Master Stream? along with their controllers? In addition to their wide product line, what Tunzi in Germany wants you to also see is their technology, their quality, their craftsmanship, and in particular, their people and the pride that goes into every one of their products and its assembly. Tunzi, high-tech aquarium ecology. Terrence here again from Neptune Systems, this time to introduce you to our latest product, the Core. The Core is a return pump that's available in two models, the Core 15 and the Core 20. And while much is the same between the two models, this video is going to focus solely on the Core 20. The Core 20 is a DC motor driven return pump rated at 2,000 gallons per hour. It uses less than 90 watts of power at the wall and has a maximum head height of 21 feet. The core can be used as a submerged or an externally plumbed pump. The core utilizes our made in the USA pump driver designed with Whisper Drive technology. Whisper Drive makes the core not only powerful and energy efficient, but it's also so quiet you'll have to strain your ears to even hear it. In fact, we challenge you to find a quieter pump out there in this price and flow range. Here's the pump itself. It has a nine foot long cable that attaches with a water resistant interconnect to the core driver. The included 100 watt power supply plugs into the wall and then into the core driver. Oh, and check out this great mount. Two screws and you simply slide it on. No cheap Velcro here. Now as far as plumbing goes, we've included fittings that give you a couple of different options. First there's these commonly seen fittings. A 1 inch slip fitting for the input and a 3 quarter inch fitting for the output. Simply glue your PVC pipe or barb fittings onto them and you're good to go. These fittings are perfect to use if you're installing the core into an existing aquarium with 3 quarter inch return plumbing. So is the Core 20 the right pump for your aquarium? Well, we think so. It's the perfect size for aquariums up to about 200 gallons. If you have a larger aquarium, want more flow, or just want added redundancy, don't buy a bigger pump. Instead, use two core pumps and split the workload. You can plumb them in separately, run them at lower power settings, and still maintain your aquarium's life support if one pump were to fail. Well, that just about sums up all we're going to cover in this video. If you want to find out more about the Core 20, we encourage you to go to our website or go to the community forum. Read what others have to say, ask your questions there, and get feedback from other control freaks just like you. Now, if you like this video, 
please be sure to subscribe to our channel so in the future you'll know the exact moment we release a new video. Well, that's all I got for now, so go enjoy those fish. Aquarium LED mounts manufactures revolutionary articulating mounts for the most popular LED fixtures and pendants. Their unique patent pending design allows for full articulation of the light. You can rotate the fixture 360 degrees while also tilting it in any direction in order to maximize coverage while reducing shadowing and light bleed onto the viewing panels. They are designed to be used in conjunction with canopies, light racks, and light bars, but can also be adapted for use with light mount arms. The kit includes all the hardware needed to attach to your favorite LED fixtures. Aquarium LED mounts offers articulating mounts for many popular fixtures, such as the GHL Mitra's LX series, Kessel 350, Kessel 360, and AP700 fixtures, as well as Ecotex Radeon, AI Hydra 52, and AI Soul fixtures. Custom mounting adapters for other fixtures can be produced upon request. For more information, check out AquariumLEDMounts.com. So we're working on the final right hand side and we're just kind of finalizing some of the larger bigger pieces uh, that'll go maybe down in the middle in the front. There's a nice big uh, table coral here that can be set up to um, hold, uh, would be a flat spot, would be uh, a spot of a landing zone for a number of corals. So Condi's working on drilling and painting it and we're going to see if we can get it down front inside the tank maybe oh there's a little man inside the tank sucker fish <laughs> or a blowfish I get that piece to sit right around there somewhere uh, it might interfere slightly with the strainer there but um, have to admit it's a long day so I'm eager to uh, get things done. We did have an issue where the uh, carpenter did not come through with the uh, board. Triangular shelf that was going to go in the back corner for all the ballast so uh, we're not going to be able to finish putting the lights in because uh, had to tear them all back out just to get in there to put the board in so uh, we'll be coming back to do some additional finalizing. The triangular shelf which will hold all the lighting ballast was given to the homeowner who would have his cabinet guy built. But unfortunately it was not completed on time and won't be dropped off until Monday. And we all know what my opinion is of cabin style. You really think this one's gonna go into that one? Huh? It's gonna crumble that shit. This motherfucker's heavy, man. You're gonna put that there? I'm gonna put Jimbo. You're gonna tell me what it's gonna look like. I think it's gonna, um, I think it's gonna crack it in half. Okay, only downside to it is you can't clean that. Uh, At all. Yeah, you won't be able to ever clean the. Uh, what? That. You can. You got a hole right here. Yeah, but remember, he's not standing in the tank, so. Is there like that? That's better. Yeah, that's not horrible. So, aside from a few pieces sitting out here, there's a. Uh, very little left in the tub. It all seems to be uh, in here and these are the pieces that they'll be using to finish up the sculpture. So we're working on the very right hand side. Condi's uh, in the midst of drilling into himself. Or 
at least drilling Six. for another pin to secure a piece in there. All right. That one tight end, that one rock tight end real good actually right there. All right, so uh, the basic rock structure is done. I uh, very for pleased. For the I've got a really bag, nice large Whoa. landing zone here, like That's an old table, work. coral table. Or table coral. There's another nice lands on there. There'll be a open shadowed spot for fish to hang out underneath there. More landing zones along here in the back. Um, now that we've kind of got the interior done, maybe another couple pieces up here, but we can reach those from the front at the top. We want some up there, right? Yeah. Can't go too tall up there because anything you put up there, you'll end up cooking. But yeah. What do you want? I He's see like a there. bridge or something. Ross, I don't know. Jim, you guys yep. figure that you out. Want something on the background? On the black, right? Well, it, yeah, it's yeah. got to fit up inside there. Okay, so Condi's kind of cleaning up a little bit from all the sculpture work and tools that uh, he's used up on top of the tank. Uh, he'll now pull out that uh, extension cord, which will allow Scott the opportunity to... Uh, climb up there and uh, take along the uh, rack that he's built to hold all the different pieces of lighting. We're going to place this in temporarily to uh, provide some light into the tank, probably the AI Hydras only at this point, because uh, once again we have to um, come back at a later time after the cabinet guy finishes the um, um, triangular ballast shelf. Alright, so... Essentially the light rack is going to consist of a, a shelf that will span between the uh, two uh, shoulders that we screwed in earlier today and then hanging from the bottom side of the shelf is the aluminum rails that the uh, articulating mounts for all the lights are attached to. Do you have those pins? Yes I do sir. Here they go. So those are some additional wooden uh, shoulders that will help support uh, the light rack and shelf itself. Currently the shelf is held in with pins or sitting on pins that are poked in the ends. We're now putting some wooden shoulders to also help support it. Especially how the weird shape of the aquarium. Okay, so with some of the sand already introduced into the tank and on top of the tank, uh, Scott's now positioning the AI Hydras, uh, we probably won't put uh, the Kessels in, but with the Hydras we can get some illumination in there. Uh, those uh, sockets are articulating mounts that slide back and forth along the rail, and then they also allow us to adjust or angle in the lights uh, to uh, aim where we want to go. So I think now is uh, time to uh, start putting in some of the uh, water. I brought along 350 gallons of RODI salt water and we'll use some pumps to pump it from the truck at the front of the house, around to the backside, and then into the tank. So you can see the uh, coral sculpture fills quite a bit of the tank. Now unfortunately you're looking at it in a two-dimensional version so you can't see just how uh, three-dimensional it actually is. There's a lot of landing zones. There's a large nice landing zone down here. Um, we're filling the tank up with water obviously. This is being pumped from the truck which is about uh, 200 feet away. Uh, it's going to take a little while to fill up but um, the uh, coral rock sculpture turned out quite impressive. Lots of uh, places to position corals and it's a pretty impressive look itself. Once it fills up and water clears and we uh, 
get some current in there as well as get the uh, Kessel lights on there. Uh, it'll start really looking quite impressive. At the moment it's just the mitras or the uh, AI hydras I should say. So as the tank uh, is probably 80% full at this point, Condi's kind of wiping the interior to get some of the uh, water line marks from the tank. You can kind of see a little bit of the sculpture inside there, and that's even with rinsed sand. <laughs> Class clown. Knucklehead. Um, it's taken probably about uh, an hour to fill up. Again, we're pumping from about 200 feet away. So with the flick of a switch from the uh, iPad laptop, you should be able to uh, turn on the water pump. It's going to suck that thing dry so fast, I'm sure. Primed right away. Protein skimmers come on. Wow, that water's flowing from the tank through the system. Yours is working better. So far. You know, we'll add more water anyways. I want to keep this thing a little bit extra full. That way you don't get a call about Sounds it. Sounds like the... Sped up and slowed down a little bit. Did it? Well, it seems to have... So we managed to get the siphon noise resolved by opening up the hole on the top of the Durzo, but uh, also created a a noise issue in the Durzo. Uh, they're now kind of trying to restrict it. The hole originally was quarter inch. I drilled it out to half inch. And there you can hear. So it is still creating a bit of a siphon. And of course, he's restricting the size of the hole right that's now. That's the noise coming along with it. And is that pump restricted or wide open? Right now it's wide open. So if we turn around and restrict it, does that solve the uh, noise issue? It helps. So the system is now up and running. Uh, we solved the uh, siphon noise. The uh, water is slowly beginning to uh, clear up. You can begin to see some of the uh, sculpture inside the tank. I'm sure by tomorrow it will be uh, very crystal clear. Okay, it's been a long day. We got a lot accomplished. The customer seems to be very happy with the end results. The water's clearing up. I'm sure by tomorrow it'll be a beautiful piece of the reef. So we're very pleased and very happy with the job that we've done amongst all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And remember, keep always moving. keep moving, moving forward. forward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna.